Hello, my name is Nathan Led. I'm a senior analyst in the Morgan's research team covering the infrastructure sector. Just wanted to provide an update on my thoughts on Sydney Airport. Just wanted to chat through traffic, uh, my thoughts on the balance sheet and potential for capital raising, and just my investment views on the stock. So, first up, just uh, on the traffic. Look, you know, recent traffic data has been pretty horrendous. I mean, the traffic levels have been absolutely decimated. Uh, for airports, both Sydney Airport and I also noticed uh, um, across New Zealand, Auckland Airport um, and also down Melbourne and Brisbane too, all have been absolutely flattened in terms of their, their traffic levels. The traffic very depressed. I've, I've seen forecasts for the likes of Brisbane Airport and SMPs who uh, provide credit ratings on the company um, and they're hopeful of domestic kicking off in maybe July, August this year. Uh, and then hopefully getting some trans-Tasman volumes coming through late this year and then potentially in the second quarter of next year uh, we start to hook in, uh, hook up into uh, Singapore, Japan, Taiwan, South Korea and potentially even to like the, the Pacific Islands. Uh, those countries that have done very well in terms of constraining uh, the spread of, um, of COVID-19. So potentially we start to get some volumes coming through I think most out there in the aviation world are, um, are predicting or are hopeful that within three to four years we're back to where we were before. Certainly my forecast that I've got officially published, I've, uh, I've assumed a far more rapid recovery in uh, traffic volumes. I'm sort of back to where they were in calendar year 19 by calendar year 22. Perhaps that's looking a little bit too aggressive given those other forecasts out there in the market. Um, on the distribution, look, if you haven't already done so in your thinking, um, look, there's going to be no interim distribution paid for the June half year this year, usually paid in August. I think it's very doubtful there will be a distribution paid for the second half uh, this year. And if traffic isn't really strong in the first half of next year, I'm sceptical that there will be actually one paid then. So for income orientated investors, I think you need to take that into consideration. Uh, I think that this is a story more now, instead of an income play, it's actually more of a medium term capital growth play as traffic returns to where it was um, over time and therefore the share price actually lifts with it. Uh, in terms of the balance sheet uh, and potential for capital raising, you know, there's a lot of talk about if um, revenues are this low, surely they've got to raise capital. Uh, Auckland Airport has already raised capital, why won't Sydney Airport go down the, uh, the same path? Um, been doing a lot, of, a lot of thinking in terms of what will be the trigger for that and I think really the credit rating is an important uh, metric or thing for, for Sydney Airport to look to defend. Uh, currently it's rated triple B plus uh, by Standard & Poor's, an equivalent for, for Moody's. In fact its metrics at the end of last year I think it almost put it into the A- minus credit range. Now it's always said that it only actually wants to protect a triple B, so that's a one notch downgrade from where it is at the moment. Standard & Poor's recently reaffirmed the triple B plus rating um, and kept the negative outlook on the company. So I think that they have that has given them some time, some period in which um, not to be concerned about needing to raise capital. Uh, I think it'll be probably next year where that actually starts to come back into consideration. I think the rating agencies will be looking at the trends coming out of FY20 or calendar year 20 into 21 and then considering how they look going into 2022. If in their forecast in 2022 they can see uh, uh, Sydney Airport's metrics getting back to what they require for a triple B plus credit rating, then they won't uh, drop their credit rating. Uh, if it has actually or hasn't improved, they'll be thinking about um, whether it's strong enough for the triple B that uh, Sydney Airport um, ultimately targets. If it's not strong enough, no doubt there'll be conversations behind the scene and that could be where Sydney Airport actually looks to raise capital to protect that credit rating. Uh, personally, on my forecast, I actually think that Sydney Airport may be able to actually scrape through. I think the traffic will start to, to come back as per um, the thinking of others in the sector to do with the recovery and domestic and also some of the international coming back. When that starts to come back, some of the commercial revenues also start to come back online. The car parking, uh, the retail, the property leases, etc. also start to the coffers of uh, Sydney Airport and replenish their liquidity. So I think that will actually uh, put them in some pretty uh, good position. Plus there's some cash that they're expecting to actually get paid through by the New South Wales government based on a deal that they did to do with the Sydney Gateway project. That'll be coming in next year. That should be close to $200 million itself coming into their uh, their bank account. So that will help them out. So I'm 
uh, you know, uh, optimistic that there won't actually be a dilutive capital raising, which will actually harm the long-term equity value per share of, of the company going forwards. Um, very much a medium-term believer in that, uh, in that traffic recovery. So if I can look three to four years out and think if the traffic is back to where it was last year, the share price potentially should also recover to that level, particularly since bond rates have remained low. Uh, that implies maybe uh, almost like a, a, a 30 to 50 percent recovery in share price over a three to four year period, plus some yields thrown in. And if we can get away with a, no capital raising, that means that uh, that outlook won't be diluted. So that that implies some pretty solid annualised returns, probably you know, in the double digit per annum type returns over that period. So you know that's a positive case. I know I'm painting, but I'm optimistic on a, uh, a good outcome, a uh, good recovery story for this company. Hence the ad rating on the stock. Thank you very much.